Hi, welcome to another episode of Red Cape Sports. On today's episode, we're gonna show you how to invest in a sports cards step by step. This episode is brought to you by Red Cape Films. I'm really excited to get started with this video, specifically because we're covering the entire topic of how to invest in sports cards. Especially if you're a beginner, you may have tons of questions. I recommend maybe looking back to some of our previous videos where we talk about five tips for beginner investors, and we have other ones on how to grade sports cards and so much more. So what I've done is I have assessed everything that I've been learning for the past few years. Bird Bouchard, my brother and host of this show, has really gotten me back into um, the whole sport of collecting and investing. And as you'll see a little bit later, we'll go over some cards that I've been getting into as well. Before we get started, I just want to remind you that in the description, we do have right here our investing sports card step-by-step -step worksheet. Now you can download this. Um, this will be on our website later on once we get the channel rolling and monetized. But for now, as the producer, I wanted to create some pretty cool stuff for you guys. So this is free for you. This is lifetime access. Um, download your um, color or black and white version. Um, it's probably gonna be in the same file, but it's gonna be step-by-step -step how to invest in sports cards. This is what we're gonna be using for the entirety of this episode. Now, the reason I created this and why we're getting into um, the first question is why would you want to invest in sports cards? Sports cards have been around for a very long time, but now we're living in a time where most things are decentralized. You're in a world where there's YouTube content like this. There is going to be different platforms through websites and people are communicating um, unlike ever before. Cards are being bought and sold through eBay at a rapid rate every minute and every second online. So what that means for sports cards is that there's a lot of action and there's a lot of potential to invest into cards. What we're gonna talk about a little bit more in this episode is how to invest. Uh, we have tons of episodes on which players and I am going to talk about that. However, we're gonna prioritize my process and the way I've been thinking about this since getting back into collecting and investing sports cards. So for me, I am more of an investor. There are a few key players that I do love, like old school Mario Lemieux. I do like some UFC athletes and specifically Zion when it comes to the basketball world. So let's get started, let's get right into it. Number one though, again, think about why you're investing in sports cards. If it's strictly money related, this is for you. If you love cards of all sorts, this is for you as well. It helps if you enjoy sports a little bit. If you have some type of background in sports, um, it's gonna help you out a lot. So let's get into step number one, find your sport. So um, a lot of us, when we think about investing in cards, you know, you just wanna get the best players, the best bang for buck. It's going to be a lot easier if you not only understand the sport, but if you enjoy the sport as well. So for me, I'm gonna write down three sports that I like. Again, you could print off this sheet. You could even, um, what I recommend, what I did before creating this was, you could even just get sheets of paper and just write down a list of things that you like. So you could write down baseball if you like baseball. You could write down football, soccer, which is other sports that we will be talking about in different cards later on. But for now, we have this great worksheet. Step number one is going to be find your sports. Unless you understand or enjoy the sports, um, it's gonna be harder to collect. If you are looking forward to watching a player play or a team that you like, not only will you know the analytics or stats of that particular player, but you're also going to enjoy collecting and investing in those cards as well. So for me, it's quite simple. I'm just gonna write on the side here but I do like MLB, that'll be baseball. I do have a background in playing college sports, um, specifically baseball as a pitcher. So that's gonna be one sport that's um, going to be good for me. I also love hockey. I did play high school hockey and a bit of travel. I love hockey. Um, 
And then the other sport that I like is NBA. I've been learning it more, but it's a sport that I find that is practical and it's a very good sport um, in terms of an investment standpoint. Um, for the year 2020 going into 2021 um, specifically. So now that you have your sport, let's go to step two. That is going to be researching players. Now this is going to be arguably one of the most important aspects. Again, when we're correlating to step number one, if you enjoy the sport, it's gonna be much easier when you go into the researching aspect. Now the reason you wanna research is to get all the statistics of which players are hot and young that you can invest into. For example, I'm a huge fan of Ja Morant and Zion Williamson. They are two young basketball players that I am looking forward to playing once the seasons kick back up. Now, the reason I liked Zion was specifically because I liked what he was doing in high school. I saw old videos and that was a form of research as well. So I was prospecting Zion and I was buying up all of his cards when he was in his crutches and he was hurt and everybody was talking about how he's not gonna make it. So that's one thing to think about. If you enjoy a player and if you see potential, use research to jump on those investments that you can get on early. If you can see potential in an upcoming player, I do recommend jumping on them early, going through their stats, watching their videos. We're in a world where you can go on YouTube, you can go on ESPN. And also, we did just create a video, um, Bird went over his whole researching process. There's a lot of baseball insight. However, it is also geared towards any other sport that you're interested in. That's gonna be in the description below as well. That's gonna be um, how Bird does his research. Step number three, you want to write players down. So you're not gonna know these players unless you do the research and they go hand in hand again. So everything ties in really well together. So what I want you to do here is write down all the players that you think have potential of becoming great players, quality investments. There are different ways of investing. We've done it for each sport with Frank as well. The main thing you wanna look for right here. So I'm gonna give you the key right here. You want young rookies that have potential or that have been established for about a year or two. And that's what I'm gonna talk about when we break down the next section here. Number one thing to remember is that the rookie card is the golden card. The rookie card is basically your first print of the card. Every card that's going to be printed after their rookie year is going to decrease in value unless it's some type of autograph or parallel or something that just looks epic or has an extreme rarity to it. However, for example, a Michael Jordan rookie card is gonna be much more valuable than his ninth or 10th or 11th season card. So once you've done the research and you have your players, I'm gonna give you some here as well, then you just wanna write them down. So for example, let's write down Luka Doncic, okay? And right here we can even write NBA. This doesn't have to be neat. You don't have to write it on the sheet. It does help though. Um, you have about 28 or 29 um, areas where you can write down players. I don't recommend you getting into investing into thousands of players. You're diversifying too much. You want to keep this to 10, 15 main cards for the year. That's my, that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to give you most of my picks anyway. So Luka Doncic, let's give another player, say Wander Franco. And then you have Zion Williamson. And what we're gonna do is once we have these, we're gonna organize it into step two. So we will bring it here after. Um, let's get into some baseball. I'm always investing in Pete Alonso. We've also got, say, a good player, LeBron James. I don't wanna give away all my picks, but I do wanna give you some. We also have Ronald Acuna. We've got, who do we got? Trey Young. Another player that we've been talking on the show pretty heavily is going to be Kyle Connor. What I'm gonna do is just go over maybe the list and a couple more. I don't wanna give away all my picks, but I do want to show you the cards regardless. So for example, you have maybe somebody who's more perspective. You have an Adley 
Rutschman. Connor McGregor. That'll be a UFC fighter. You know, somebody like Khabib Nurma Gomedov. And then you'll have players like Kobe Bryant. Now, this doesn't have to be neat. The main thing is you're getting the thoughts out of your head onto paper. Now, our, the other option that I do recommend as well is you can go on your cell phone. And what I do is I go to one of my apps here. I don't wanna give everything away, but I'll go into my notes and then basically I will choose my picks in here. So all of my picks I have accessible to me and I'm just gonna update that from time to time. So say I'm at a card store or I am online, but I'm elsewhere. Maybe Bird or another investment partner calls me and they're like, hey man, I got this deal on this lot, do you want in? Then we can go ahead and proceed and I know which players I'm focused on. So what I'm gonna do is just fill up the rest. I'm just gonna write down players. These are not going to be players that I'm investing in, but they're gonna be names that we can then use to add to our next step. Okay, so let's imagine I just maxed out on all the players that I'm investing in and they're all written down in the player list. So let's take those and let me explain step number four. So let me explain step number four. That is going to be the 50, 40, 10 rule. Now this is just going to be a template. This doesn't mean that this is the best way or the only way to invest in cards or to organize it. This is just a way to show you how to basically curate and how to organize your thoughts on the paper. This is a way to diversify your risk. We're not going to diversify players. We've already done that. Again, I don't recommend you just getting, you know, two or three players. You should get probably around 10 to 15. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna organize that as well. Now, the first option we have here, and this isn't printed, but what we're gonna do is assess the high, medium, and low risk. So we're gonna put how much percentage of our players are going to be high risk that we're investing into, medium risk or low risk. I'm gonna show you how I do it and why. And again, you can do the opposite if you're not as risk averse. I put 90% into medium and high risk. 10% goes into long-term. The reason I do that is because I do do a lot of research and I've been lucky thus far and being able to um, have some solid picks, but also the risk isn't a big issue to me. I don't have a lot to lose. The way I see this is I am all in, I'm full throttle, and majority of the time I'm gonna be um, holding on to very high risk players that I'm looking to flip in a year or two. Most of the time, these cards you have to be pretty patient with, and that's part of the process. So now we have our players, Let's go over how we can take these and how to put them into the list. So first of all, you have to understand what your risk tolerance is. So for me, near the 50%, I am going to put medium risk, 40, I'll put high, 10, I'll put L for low. Now, low risk is going to be players that have been in the league for plus five years, Again, don't judge my low risk. This is just the way I'm doing things. And again, I really believe in everything that we preach on this show. For me, low risk is going to be five years in the league or more. So what that's going to do is give you a track record through your research as to what this player has done. And you're gonna have a good idea as to where they are um, in terms of their performance. If you're just in the league for a month or two, you could be doing well and just slowly decline. You can get an injury, you could, a lot of things could happen. But after five years, for example, you would know that a player like LeBron James, which we'll talk about in a second, he had already performed well. He's getting a lot of points per game. He's dominant against other players. He is progressing as a player, scoring points, physically different. Now again, the reason why it's so important to get quality good players, no matter which category you're in, is due to the fact that you want to get players that will continue to do good things. That could be on and off the court. That could be through pitching and getting more wins, winning World Series. This could be winning um, MVPs and being an all-star again. 
dunking on people. This could be many things. But for example, LeBron James, you are going to make a lot more money if you were to invest in LeBron James in his first or second year than you would in his fifth, sixth, seventh. So just remember that the more risk you put into it, the higher amount of dollars you can make. If you want to do a low risk, that's fine. Because first of all, you're most likely not going to lose your money. And second of all, you're going to get that nice steady climb. The only thing is that it's going to take more time. You have to be ready to long hold where the other way you can make more money in a shorter period of time. So what is a high risk? A high risk is going to be a player with less than one year in the league. So somebody who is just maybe a prospect player, maybe they're not even drafted yet. Um, somebody like Wander Franco. So Wander Franco is a player that we talk about quite a bit. He's a baseball player, hasn't played an MLB game yet. His card prices are already going up. Him, he's going to be a high risk player because we don't know how he's going to do exactly. We can only speculate. We can have a good idea, but you don't know how he's going to perform 100%. Nobody knows. So that's gonna be somebody with less than one year in the league, and they're probably gonna have zero accolades. But on the plus side, you can make the most amount of dollars. So you can make a lot more money with your high risk players. And through research, you can identify these key players and ride their wave. And you could also make this much quicker. You don't have to wait 10, 20 years. You could flip their cards within a month or two. Now, medium risk. This is where I put 50% of my dollars into. That's going to be players like Luka Doncic. That's going to be Pete Alonso, Ronald Acuna Jr. The reason I like that is because, first of all, you've seen them for maybe one to three years. So, so a medium risk player in my mind is going to be a player who's been in the league for at least a year and a max of about three. You've seen their stats and now, instead of taking that risk where, hey, they may not make it, you're going to jump in and ride that wave of them potentially winning a World Series or being an all-star or winning MVP or getting a ton of championship rings and also maybe their stats are just gonna be out of control. For me, a player like Luka Doncic, who we've seen play for a little bit now, about a year and a half, he's got tons of points per game, he's passing the ball, and he hasn't won anything. So anytime he wins, we're gonna to get to ride that wave. So again, it's not like a low risk where we're getting him when he's retired and his, he's not doing much. We're getting him in the prime, we're getting him I would say even before the prime. So that's why I like that. Again, there's a lot of risk if they get hurt or if they just decline in their performance, you can get crushed. However, um, this is going to be a pretty safe investment because if you researched and if you understand that a player like Ronald Acuna or Pete Alonso that have hit tons of home runs and that seem to have a good poise to them, then this is going to be a good investment. And I recommend putting 50% into that and 40% into high and then 10% into low. And that's what I'm doing for another investment um, as well. So now that we have that, all we have to do is take our medium risk players from our list. So again, a player that's been in the league for a year to three years. So that's gonna be Luka Doncic. So here we'll write Luka. On Wander Franco, that's gonna be on our second list. So this is gonna be high risk, medium, and low. So for my medium risk, I'm gonna put in Luca. Um, Wander Franco, let's put Wander. He's gonna be a high risk player, hasn't been in the league yet, despite the fact that he's performing well in his other leagues. Zion Williamson, he's been less than a year, but the beauty of him is I mean, when I was getting him, he hadn't played yet. So he was a perspective for me. And then next year, he will move into that list of a medium risk if he keeps performing well. So here we'll put Zion. Number three would be Pete Alonzo. Again, he's already played a year. Performed really well. LeBron James, he would be low risk. So here we'll just put James. Now you can kind of see what we're doing. We're putting players who have been established where, you know, LeBron James rookie card is three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. However, Luca and Pete's, they can be around fifty to $300 for the most part. And I would rather put more money into this because this is going to be hard to gain. This is going to take more time. 
And again, you're putting $3,000 into something. And this you can flip. So again, Zion Williamson, Wander Franco. I was buying Zions at $7. Those same cards are hundreds. So again, I'll finish this list. Ronald Acuna. So Acuna, Acuna Matata, he will be in the one to three years. And again, a great prospective player. Ronald Acuna right now, um, he might hit 40 home runs and 40 stolen bases if he gets the opportunity. Trey Young, one to three. Kyle Connor, very young player. Adley Rutschman, again, you would throw him um, over here. So you put Rutschman. And then you have all of, so basically you are taking all these players and you're throwing them in the list. And also a big bonus of looking at all of your players from the standpoint is the fact that you can start scratching guys off when you think that, you know, they don't fit your needs. So I could be like, oh, you know what? Pete Alonzo, I actually don't really want to get him anymore. So I could start scratching him off. And then now when, you know, paycheck comes in or, hey, I've got a couple hundred bucks. I look here and I'm like, okay, so say you have a hundred bucks, you can get a Trey Young hoops card and then high risk, you throw in 40%. So you put $40 into say a few Rutschman or a Wander Franco card and then $10 you would set aside to maybe buy a higher end long-term player. This gets you thinking and hopefully this is working out to get you thinking about, you know, how do people structure their investments? So I hope that explains the 50, 40, 10 rule. Simply put, you can choose where you wanna put your risk. You could do low risk at 50%. You could do you know, high risk at you know, 10%. You could change all these things up and you don't have to use 50, 40, 10. This is just what I use and it gives me a guide. This whole thing is a guide. When you have all these ideas and they're all locked up in your head, you can throw it on paper and you can breathe a bit. You can be like, oh, you know what? I don't even care about this player. Oh, this player's hurt. Or, hey, I'm gonna circle this player. I gotta, I gotta move him here, you know? For example, I do wanna get Conor McGregor cards, but they're expensive and I see them more as a long-term hold. I see him being great. So Conor McGregor, I have him on my list. I'm ready to go next time the investment opportunities come up. So number five, you're gonna budget and plan. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna assess how much you have. For example, you have $1,000. So you're gonna take $1,000 and you're gonna write it maybe over here. You're gonna write $1,000, okay? For me, it's gonna be say Canadian. So now that you have $1,000, you can take that amount and buy these cards and it's diversified and you've done the research and you're ready to go. So for me, I'll take 500 bucks and I'll put it into Luca, Acuna, Trey, for example. You may have more on your list. I would. 400 bucks, you throw it into Wander Franco, some Zion, some Adley Rutschman. You grab 100 bucks, and maybe you buy a old school rookie card. Maybe it's raw, or again, it depends on how much money you have to begin with. So the planning of this is already done, and your budget is done. That's all you have to do. Again, let's move on to step number six. So in step number six, what you're going to do is spend and track. So now we've acquired these cards. So now we've got our cards. So for example, I've got my medium risk cards here, my high risk cards here. They came in the mail and here are my low risk. Again, um, this is going to be the spending. So me, I get most of my cards through Frank at FNC House of Cards. He's got an incredible local card shop. Um, unfortunately right now with the whole coronavirus, um, it's it's pretty much impossible. We we are not getting cards, and in fact, I'm not even seeing bird much right now. So um, I'm buying a lot of cards online through eBay, and it has slowed down a little bit. But nonetheless, these are tons of cards that I got on eBay. So let's look at my medium risk. So before buying your cards, you have to know which ones to get. We're gonna do this briefly. We talk about it more on other episodes. Say you're getting basketball cards, you want to look. Primarily for NBA, you want to look at prism cards and now hoops are gaining popularity. For baseball, you want to get the tops, tops chrome or Bowman, Bowman first cards. And again, these are all rookies. For sports like hockey, I recommend the Young Guns. Young Guns is going to be their beautiful rookie card and that's the one to get right now. So now that you know which cards to get, for a Luka Doncic or Trey Young, I know that I want to get these hoops cards. So what are they valued at? How do I know that? 
what you want to do is go on eBay, type in Luka Doncic or Trey Young, and hit the sold listing. So basically, this is going to show you which cards have been sold, and that's going to be what people are buying and selling these cards at. So if somebody's selling a card like this for $400, you know that that is too much because they are not being sold at $400. This card is gaining popularity. They used to be 20, 30. Now they're going up 100, 200, 300. And it depends on grading as well. I recommend for now, if you're a beginner, get your raw graded cards. Again, that's a whole different episode. We do have an entire episode on that. That is going to be how to grade your sports cards, how to identify them. And we have that on the channel as well. So for example, I've got these cards that I've been getting for a while. We have some Trey, Luca, and we have a couple of Ronald Acuna. So this is an Acuna. These cards are a little bit different. I have one raw, but I have one graded right here. This is going to be a good Acuna card to get, by the way. This is gonna be your tops update. This card I got for around $60, $70 Canadian. Now it's going for about 250, 300 graded um, 9.5. This is mint. This is a Canadian company. I recommend looking at BGS. That's going to be Beckett grading, or you can look at PSA, which is going to be professional sports authentication. Unfortunately, they're shut down with Corona season, but when they come back up, you'll be ready to go because you're going to have your list ready. This card I got and I assessed the price through eBay. So I typed in Ronald Acuna Jr. I knew I wanted the tops update, so I found that card through sold listings and six months ago, so I bought this card for around $60, $70, and that's what I was able to do. Now, part of the spend and track, now what I wanna do is just show you how to track it. So I took these off so I could redo it. What I do is when I get a card, what I'll do is I will put some painter's tape. Now, you want to use painter's tape. Please do not use scotch tape to send cards off to people don't use scotch tape around your cards. So what you're gonna do is take that, take any pen that you want, preferably a red one, and what you're gonna write on the back is what you paid for it. So this card, I did pay 62.50. That'll be Canadian. So I know that already, because all my cards I write down on the back in Canadian funds. So now I know what I got this card at. So. Now when it's stacked on my shelf, somebody goes, hey, will you take $300 for this Acuna card? I'll be like, yeah, I'll take $300 because I'm gonna four times my money, easy. Um, the other thing, again, say you have a card like Elias Pedersen. What you can do is take a sticky note, and again, you, could, you have to protect your cards. You can put these in team bags or graded bags. I recommend putting the tape on there if you can. Um, either way, it doesn't matter as long as they're protected. Put a piece of tape. This card was $80. So I believe I got this at Frank's a long time ago. And I have a PSA 9 um, for $80. Was this the best investment? Probably not, but I was getting started and I want to be honest. So in terms of medium risk, these are some of the cards. Again, I'm giving you tons of picks here, by the way. Ronald Acuna Jr., uh, we have Luca, Trey, another Ronald, uh, Jordan Alvarez, um, another secret one here. If you can identify which card this is, write it down in the description below. Let's see who's the first one to say which card this is. It's a good investment, by the way. What we'll talk about a little bit later on when we have Kevin on the show is you can buy lots of cards. Now, again, you wanna make sure that when you're buying cards, they are mint. They are in good condition because condition is pretty much everything. We have more episodes on what to be looking for, um, which cards to get. So don't stress about that. The main body of work, the main importance is this worksheet and to give you, um, you know, a little guide as to how to organize which cards to get and how to allocate your funds and how I personally diversify funds through cards. So again, here we've got a Pete Alonzo lot. If you get lots of cards, you can typically get them for cheaper. So for me, I know I want Pete Alonzo's. So Kevin and I will buy lots and we'll split it. So for example, we bought this and got Pete Alonzo's for about oh, $10 a card for the Chromes. So now we'll round Robin and pick cards. I get the beautiful parallel. So that's one way of thinking about things too. Again, just given value. 
These we got for around $5 a card, Canadian. So this is gonna be more Pete Alonzo's. I'm very bullish on him. This is going to be a different variation. The one to get is going to be his Topps Chrome. The one to get is going to be his Topps Chrome, in my opinion. So we've got 40% in our high risk. We've got players who have been in the league for um, less than a year. So we've got Wander Franco. This is a good card, good card to get. This is gonna be his Bowman first. Again, these aren't all my investments. Most of them are tucked away in a safe place. This is just what I have here in the studio. We've got Wander Franco, Bowman first, nice card. Um, this one isn't going to be graded um, because it has some surface issues. Um, so we also have a Kobe White. This is a very big up and coming card. I've also got a huge lot coming in through Kevin and I'm excited about that. Again, great picks um, and it's all timing. And three um, Zion Williamson's because my goal is to get 100 Zion Williamson's and he's gonna be part of my PC. So I may keep one of these or um, you know, one of different ones that I have. I'm probably gonna have five to 10 Zions that I'm holding long-term. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be a good perspective player in my eyes. So again, we've got um, low risk. So low risk gonna be players that have been in the league for a long time. I don't have a lot of these cards here with me. A lot of them are graded. Typically, I do recommend getting your long hold your low risk cards graded because if you can get a 10 of those it's gonna be much harder to get um, going forward whereas now there's so many cards um, in their rookie years and more people are jumping into this so what we have here is just a mario lemieux patrick wall we're gonna pretend that those are rookies in yager so again this is gonna be a Dwayne wade rookie card we got kobe bryant LeBron James cards, some pretty cool cards. These will be um, your more low risk cards that shouldn't go down in value. They're, they're legends, most of those guys. So, and again, just something to show you. I know they're not sports cards, but I'm a huge believer in Pokemon cards. So part of my low risk is I get almost anything with Charizard on it and Pikachu. Um, I don't see those going down in value. And again, I'm working on an entire old Pokemon set. So the originals, I've also got some Blastoise and other stuff. I don't see these going down anytime soon. Pokemon is a huge community. It's a big deal. And it's just a way to think about your low um, risk and long-term investment. Again, what I'm gonna show you right now is cards that I'm getting for Dr. Ryan, Ryan Ahmed. Ryan um, had the courage to say, hey Mitch, I wanna invest in cards. Here are some cards that I'm investing for him. So Ryan said he wanted to invest in the cards. I told him I would help him out. So I got some pretty good deals for him. And also I have some of those lots that are going for him as well. Um, I'm working on that for him. So what we have here, um, just to show you. So I hope Ryan's watching right now too. Um, Ryan, for now, he's also got a card being graded. He's got a Jack Eichel. Hopefully we'll get a 9.5 and some of these Pete Alonzo's are going to be his as well. So we've got a Ronald Acuna. Got this card for 100 bucks, graded. Hopefully, if it's a 9.5 or better, we can double, maybe triple our money um, in a year or two. This card is going to be an Optic um, rookie, Zion Williamson. Got this for $80. I could see it in person. Again, the centering's quite well. Surface is good, corners and edges. And then we also have Kobe White, a beautiful Kobe White card. We got next to nothing. Again, the Ronald Acuna was about 100. Um, Zion Williamson was 80. Kobe White was 15. So that's one way to think about it. Again, I am showing you as much as possible. We are adding as much value as possible to you. So hopefully what you can do is assess, really think about this. Do the research, write things down, and really understand what you're doing. I hope this has helped you. Again, make sure to protect your cards, get them graded if, um, if that opportunity comes up. Again, don't forget to smash the like button, comment, and also post some of your favorite cards to our Facebook page. I know I'm going to be. We'll see you next week.